two, one, three, two, one, three, two, one. We're live. Oh my God. Another episode of the, <sighs> of the Build Assets Online podcast slash show, whatever you want to call it. We're here and we're talking about Kindle publishing tips for 2020. And we're going to be doing a little bit of a case study and giving five-step process to building an email list that converts. And if you look on the screen, you'll see that um, the, the Google Slides thing says email is misspelled. <laughs> and I don't know what's up with that, but I, I think Pretty I spelled funny. it right. Well, what is it recommending you do? Let's see. If I right click it, it says I should change it to that, to email, capital E, and then mail. So. Yeah. You know and, how it is, these, uh, these AI algorithms. Yeah. Yeah, they don't sure. know what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> they don't know anything. Yeah. All I right. saw someone. Well, should, we, should we wait for people to get, come in here? I don't know if this thing's working. If you're if you're here watching, please um pop something in the chat. It says it says nobody's here, which is disheartening. Yeah, it does say that. I don't really know why that is. Uh so weird. Did you put it in the Discord? Put it in the Discord. Yeah. Put it in the email. Yeah. I uh, I don't know. I don't... So what were you gonna say, Mike? I was gonna say we're talking about the AI uh, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw something online. It was like, like why? <laughs> why is um? I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm gonna botch it and make it not funny. But it was like. Why is the computer asking me if I'm a robot? Bitch, you're a robot. <laughs> nice. That's funny. Was that a Twitter meme? Is that what you said? A Twitter meme. Uh, and I don't know what it, you know how it like someone will post something on Twitter and then like someone will screenshot it and then post it on Instagram. And then someone will like take that and make a video on TikTok. and on and on. So, you know, I don't, I don't even know. I don't know what to say. Oh, I don't know. I don't know how the internet works anymore, but. That's why yeah. we that's why we stick to low tech solutions, low tech business models. We do have people here. The chat is starting to to go yeah, off. Um, hey Karina, Mick. hey Mick. Um, so yeah, I guess we can get right into it, guys. I don't want to leave the people here waiting, especially the ones mm. that are watching this after. I don't want them to have to wait to hear us ban. I don't want them to hear us banter for three yeah. minutes before getting into the good stuff. Yeah, too All much right. shaking banter. Let's go. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about something that we've been doing um, in the past, like, I guess not even a week or so now, but we're basically looking to firepower or build a lot of emails to our Kindle list. Right now we have around 12,000 subscribers. And um, when we launch a book, we pretty much get into um, the top, like very, very close to the top 100 in all of the Kindle store every time. We have broken the top 100 before, but that was kind of like, um, we can't, we don't do that on a regular basis. We always get just really close to it, but then don't quite break into the top 100. So this is operation grow the email list um, to, I don't know, how much are we growing it, Mike? So if 12,000, what's our goal? I want to get it to 100,000, but I don't think that's going to be. I think 100,000 will be a good number to have. Yeah, that would be take that take that SBA loan and just throw it all into Facebook one day. Uh -huh. Here you go, Mark. Take Hundred fifty thousand dollar budget. Let's go. Yeah. Take my take my whole SBA loan, Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I kind of want to preface this with like, I I've looked so long, like over the last five years, I've really tried to get into like how do you do email marketing correctly. Because everyone talks about it like, oh, email marketing is the best. Email marketing is the best. But no one ever talks about like the heuristics for how to get people and be able to email them. And they'll actually open your stuff and become engaged with you. Because I think that's really the the problem, right? Is like you can get someone to download an ebook and or do whatever and get them on your list. But then after that, you have to kind of get in their head and you have to get in their reality so that you, they know who you are. Otherwise you're just going to end up like another person that winds up in the spam box. Like I have a million people that I, some, I, I've subscribed to somewhere somehow 
and I see emails come in either like I don't register them or they go, they go to my promotions feed, you know, so there's a, there's a big, big sort of learning curve or gap between getting that lead and actually getting that lead to like you and want to read your emails. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. So let's get to step one. Step one is very, very simple. Here's what we did. Um, we created a very, very simple giveaway landing page on AWeber. So if you go to buildassetsonline.com slash AWeber, A-W-E-B-E-R, um, that's the email service we use. And they recently made this thing where you can just make a landing page. And um, on the screen, you'll just see like an example of a basic one that AWeber provides. So if you're listening, I'll just describe um, the best that I can. So you'll have to give away like a lead magnet for this. You'll have to give away you know, like a, like a free book to some to someone or like ideally like a free book or a free novella that you have that you're willing to give away for free. Um, Maybe a series of short stories, whatever. So you create a landing page, you just have a picture of the book and you just basically say, hey, um, check out, you, you can download this book for free, just sign up for my email list. It doesn't have to be complicated, just make something like that. And then, um, you know, I would make the button say, claim your free book. Just they have to type in their name, type in their email, one click, boom, um, they're in. So you have to create a landing page like that. Um, so it, yeah, like you, like I mentioned, free lead magnet can be a, can be a free book, free short story. But if you have audible, um, if you, if, if you have any books on audible, you could possibly have some free coupon codes or something like that, that you can offer as like a giveaway with like limited quantities. Um, the problem with that is since you only have a limited number of codes um, to download your audiobook for free, that might not scale very well. So you need something where you can give away unlimited copies and you can throw like little bonuses in there like, hey, with a chance to win something, something if you want. Not necessary, um, but just something to to do, to think about. Yeah, but the point is that it has to be super, super congruent with what your emails are going to be about and what your products are about. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So step two. Yeah. So I want to double down. <laughs> I want to double down on that point. Like, uh, because if you're just making something that's irrelevant, that's not related to the books that you're going to be selling them on Kindle later, it's not going to work. So make sure that that relevance is built in. So say you're publishing in, uh, I don't know. What's the, what's a good genre? Say you're publishing in science fiction, for example. And, you know, it's a specific genre of science fiction about like aliens or something like that. You know, make sure that what you're giving away is closely related to the books on aliens that you're writing. So um, I want to give an actual example. Okay. Because there was um, a particular list builder, list building thing that we did or we entered into it. So it wasn't us hosting it. It was a third party. And, you know, we paid like a hundred bucks or something to get into it. And what happens is we recommend um, like good list builders in our course. And so what, what happens is there'll be like 20 authors, 10 to 20, and they each give a free book. And so what you can do is now the, the person running the giveaway, if someone can sign up and either they're going to get like 10 to 20 free books or they'll be entering to win 10 to 20, you know, win certain books or get certain prizes and stuff like that. And so we had done one, we did one one time and it was for like clean romance. It was for, um, it was like mail order bride stuff and Regency. And it was just any, anything clean I think was, we were, we were able to do it. And what happened was the person running the giveaway, they like were including um, Little House on the Prairie DVDs and just a bunch of, of stupid things and we got like thousands and thousands of people that signed up for this um but the leads were trash yeah Yeah. so that's an extreme example but we've also done it where we've done these bigger giveaways and it's like enter to win um social type things so it's like if you want extra spots to win you can share it and then it kind of encourage encourages virality um that has also not really worked out well for us either because it's it's incentivizing people to sign up just for the sake of winning and not really people that are going to be the ones that want 
to do what, what you want them to do, which is download your book, read it, and then read the next book that you have. So you need to keep that in mind. Um, I'm actually really glad you brought that up because that's something that – uh, to my to many people that might not be so obvious i know for me that there was definitely a point wasn't. yeah for us it wasn't even at that time which which i guess it wasn't that long ago but you know we always talk about how intent is everything whether you're advertising on the social networks or you're doing stuff for the search engines intent is really everything and um i would rather pay more for a lead so i'd rather advertise to people that's my offer knowing that most some a large majority of them who would have opted in if I would have offered something free they they're going to be like nah I don't want this I'm not that interested in this alien book um, but the people that are interested who are willing to click it and put in their email I'd rather pay a little more for those people than pay less and get all these garbage leads pay, yeah. le- pay less per lead is what I'm saying and it kind of goes back to our principles with Google Ads and high ticket drop shipping is we will pay a lot per click compared to doing a Facebook ad. And the whole idea of the Facebook ad is like, all right, I'm going to get in this really cheap traffic because I did a great job with the ad set and I did this and I did that. And then I'm going to kind of nurture them down into buying. And it's a lot harder to do. And it winds up costing more than just say, even spending like $8 a click, but it's for a really, really high intent keyword. So yeah, you're right, Joe. I think just, Paying more upfront so that you know this is the audience you want versus thinking, oh, you know, even if it's kind of not super precise, I can be good with emailing them and nurturing them and they'll eventually open up to me and all that. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're not anymore. You're not selling someone who's interested in Little House on the Prairie. Like if that's the only thing that made them sign up for, for the giveaway or the email list, you're not selling them a paranormal alien romance. There's just no way. So, let's... <laughs> well, yeah, well, no, it was for clean stuff, but even that, you get what I'm saying? Like I was giving a, an extreme example. Yeah. Okay. Even that, even that, you know, you're, they're interested in little house on the prairie. That doesn't necessarily mean they're interested in like Regency romance or anything, any like period piece or anything like that. So moving on. So the next step after you created your landing page and hooked it up with your email provider, like AWeber, is to find your target audience on Facebook. And I recommend like you know, starting with three to five audiences. You can see in the screenshot that um, I just selected James Patterson, who's an interest on Facebook. Uh, he has around 3,500,000, uh, that's, that's the audience size. Now, obviously, if your books are related to James Patterson's books, you, this is something you would maybe try as an audience, or you could try James Patterson with a bunch of similar authors. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, but you want to ne- find a bunch of ad groups or, or, sorry, targeting options that are relevant to the type of books that you have. So, you know, I, a, good, a good place to start is looking on the Kindle store itself, um, seeing what authors are in the top for your categories. Um, if you can't find those, uh, you can even target some broad interests like, uh, like contemporary romance could be a targeting option you can try. Um, but then I might narrow it down to say, make sure they also actually have an Amazon Kindle. I would use Facebook's options to, to narrow that down. So yeah, very, very simple second step, but you know, you want to find a good, a good three to five audiences, at least I think that you want to, uh, experiment with. Well, Joe, what if you you have your own audience? Ah, yes, of course. If you have your own audience, um, you'll include that as well inside the campaign. Um, so if you do things the way we teach in our course, um, you should have your book audience, uh, people who usually click your Facebook ads, uh, saved on your Pixel. Um, even though they're using, even though they're clicking to Amazon, we do that with uh, with Genius Links. So we definitely want to have you definitely want to do that. So. It can be new audiences and your own audiences and your own audience because just because someone uh, is your audience on Facebook, they might not be on your email list. Yeah, exactly. So moving on to step three. Now, what I like to do, uh, this is a relatively new option that Facebook has. Um, It's called campaign budget optimization. So I'll just throw all those audiences in one campaign 
and I'll, I'll set the campaign level to a daily budget. Right now we're doing $50. You can, st you can start with whatever you, know, whatever you got to spare. I guess it depends on what you want your velocity to be. We're running at $50 a day. Uh, you can start with 20, start with 10, um, and just let Facebook do the work in finding which ad sets are gonna be the cheapest. So I've been doing that and I think it's been working well. And it's, a, it's an easier way to manage things in, in my opinion. What were you doing before? Um, so I was setting each of the audiences had its own, um, each of the ad sets which contained the audiences I was targeting, they each had their own uh, daily budgets. Okay, then you had to like kind of tweak each one based yeah. on the performance and stuff. Yeah, so when you would tell me, uh, put this book on $50 a day, I'd have to go into each of those individual ad sets and say, all right, reduce this one by five, reduce this one by 10. So yeah. Yeah, it seems like a pain in the, you know what? Yeah. No, it's a good feature. So that's what I recommend nowadays. Now, the fourth step is to make sure you have a follow-up sequence. So when someone joins your email list, obviously you want to email them right away to give you the, to give them the free book. But then you want to give them more emails to the books you have on Kindle, um, AKA your back catalog. And um, th this is what Mike was talking to before. Once they get on your list, uh, come up with a way and have a strategy and a system in place to keep them engaged. Um, because obviously you're not going to be dropping new books every day, but you don't want you, you don't want them to forget about you. So that's yeah. very important. I think this is a crucial, crucial step because I had this preconceived notion. I had this kind of roadblock in my head. Am I going to email them too much and piss them off and they're going to unsubscribe? All right, this is like email marketing, number one concern. Am I going to email too much? And and what what's going to happen with that? And what we found, especially with Kindle, but I really think that this accounts for anything, is the more you email, the better. So that means daily emails are great. Um, people even email more than that. And people might complain, but... Guess what? The people that don't, you know, those people that are complaining, let them leave. But the more you email, the more people are going to be, be seeing your name and getting used to your name and the more chances you have of someone opening the email. Um, and, and a great example of this is Ben Settle, who's, you know, basically all he does is email marketing. And so, you know, if you want to spend a good $97, you can sign up to his, uh, his membership is, I don't know what the hell you call it. It's like, it's like a paid newsletter essentially. So it's like a physical email you get, but you also get a copy of his, um, it's like a book of just his email marketing strategies. And he talks about this, that really he's seen no, no ill effects from emailing daily or multiple times a day over years and years. Um, so we've, we've used this with Kindle. We try to email at least every other day. But sometimes if I'm doing a, a book promotion, we'll email multiple times a day and it, it just, it just works. And I'll tell you what, Joe, I know you got something to say. I heard you do a little breathe in, but I'll tell you what, there are big people <laughs> in the internet marketing space that if you look at what they do, they email a lot. They email multiple times per day and it's kind of annoying, but I'm sure they're doing it because it works. Yeah. Well, the only thing I was going to breathe in and say was you want to make sure that you're just not, not every email should have some sort of like entertainment like factor to it. It, it yeah. can't just be same subject, buy my book, buy my book, buy my book. Oh, did you know my book is on sale? Buy my book. <laughs> you know, I think it, yeah, it's, that's good, true. It's definitely that's true. Yeah. So, okay. What do you, what do you say? What do you say in all these emails? That's also another problem is, you know, Maybe, maybe people aren't, they're not sure what to, how to sell. And I think the answer is you don't have to sell. I think all you have to do, you can look up the, the click funnels, um, Seinfeld sequence concept. And all that is, is if you're familiar with Seinfeld, it's a show about nothing, but it's just entertaining. It's just engaging. So you can literally just email them, say whatever you want, make it, I don't know, talk about your life, talk about this fictional pen names life and say, Hey, I also got this book. Check it out. 
and um you know you, you'd be surprised but yeah i think this is something people just you have to get a feel for it you have to test out headlines see what people respond to and just just dive in but yeah don't don't be like hard selling every email that's not that's 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 gonna dissuade people from staying on your list because you're not providing any any entertainment you're just kind of in their face and um being annoying yeah so let's take a look at our results so far um so i think how many days has this gone on how many days we've we been doing this mike do you remember no oh okay august 4th we started actually so eight days eight days okay so in eight days so far we've got a uh, so the cost per result was 35 cents and the results here we got 1103 new leads uh, it's reached 17,168 people and we've had a 21 cent cost per click so uh, what that tells me is a large percentage of people are opting in they're they're opting in after they click so that's good and again this was just such a simple landing page like like i just described before like you just create a page with your book sign up to our email list to get it for free and boom because again it comes down to the people always they always like get into like oh you got you got to change your colors you got to like uh you got you got to have a slick landing page mate you got to do all this stuff but no, the intent is what's is what's the most important. Your landing page could be absolutely yeah. garbage, and um, oh wait, my my actually my I'm blocking my camera was blocking the results on YouTube, so you could see one thousand one hundred and three results, um, thirty five cents per lead. You can see I just had to move myself. Well, so that's, I was trying to figure that out. Oh, okay. So results means signups, right? Because the the campaign is targeted um, for lead generation. Okay, I was looking on the right side to see, like, I don't know. Yeah. Something. So, but, I, okay. Cool. Yeah, and so um, this, this is just the signups, right? But we're actually seeing pretty good engagement and pretty good open rates and click-through rates on our sign-up sequence, which is, which is important. Um, on the initial email for people to, you know, get their books and stuff, we have, like, a 50% open rate and a 50% click-through rate, which is obviously great but that's expected because that's what they signed up for um and then it might pull up some of these stats uh, while, uh, while you're pulling yeah. that up mike i know it hasn't really been enough time but have you seen any sort of since we started doing this any sort of movement in the back catalog like mm, i would need to kind of i would need to analyze it on like um Comparing, comparing you yeah. know like one one date range versus another date range yeah and um especially since you know things take a couple weeks just to like the for the kmp to kick in and and all that so i think after a month of doing this if we look at like the month we were doing it versus the previous month um hopefully we can see something some good stuff but i actually sent out an email today to people that are still on the, the welcome sequence. So out of that um, 1,100, there was about, oh, God, I'm doing multiple things at once. There was about 800 something. And I, I sent it out today, like just a couple hours ago. And it's gotten pretty, it's gotten above average click-through rate for our list. So that tells me that the leads that we were adding to our list are of, you know, they're they're just as good just as qualified as the ones currently on our list. And I think people's engagement might go down over time, right. you know, exactly over the years, but it is, it is a good sign to be able to send out an email. Uh, I just sent out an email for, you know, one of our books to see what would happen. And yeah, it, it's, uh, it's getting some good click through rates. We'll have to see what it does to sales and to rank and stuff. But yeah, I mean, th this is the goal, right? Because, I think when we did our last launch, we noticed that when we sent out those first emails and like we haven't sent it out via swaps yet or anything else, um, that's when we get the most click-throughs. That's when we can really influence our rank very, very heavily, especially when we're combining that with the Facebook ads. That's just driving more and more traffic. So we're getting the buys and the total traffic and the conversion rate is still pretty good. Um, you can have a very, very... 
potent influence on, well, on your rank. Let's not mention that this is also feeding, well, this is also feeding our audience on Facebook. So the next time we launch, uh, assuming we continue with this and we actually do take it all the way to 100,000 new subscribers, uh, which yeah. would be 100x, so that would be kind of crazy. But um, assuming we do do that, or even at the rate we're going now, we're still adding a bunch of warm uh, leads to our targeting list on Facebook. So they're going to get our email and get targeted when we launch a book. Mm -hmm. And just um, looking at this campaign, it spans over about two weeks. It takes about two weeks to get through the, the welcome sequence. So at the end of it, um, people that have made it to the end of the last email, their click-through rates were like 7%. Which is still it's nothing to sneeze at, Joe. Uh, let me ask you a question. I don't know if this is this is too difficult to analyze right now, but do we have any idea? So, what would it what would it what would we hypothetically make if someone read one of our box sets or like our whole back catalog? Like, what's the potential the value? Catalog? Like, what's the yeah, what's the like the, the maximum value per subscriber? that we could get. Obviously we're not going to get that for every subscriber, but I'm just trying to figure out like where, if, if say out of one, every 100 subscriber becomes like a mega fan and they read all of our box sets, what happens then? Um, I, yeah, I, I'd have to really check. I know like one of our, so we have two big box sets and those, if they're red, we make probably 10 to $15. So someone does that. This is a solid $25. And then we have, um, you know, I, I, it's, it's hard to say. Probably could be in the $40 range if they went through our entire back catalog. Okay. Good stuff. Um, all right. We'll move on here. Um, if, if you're in the chat, you can leave us some questions. So I know we already said hi to uh, Karina and Mick, but uh, we have to say hi to Focus. <laughs> Focus 06 loyal fan of the stream um all right so food for thought and we already kind of touched on this but like i said right now our email list is already at twelve thousand. we get very close to the top 100 on each release to double our list costs which would to double our list would cost around forty two hundred dollars at our current results mm -hmm. would we get the top 100 every time if we had our if we, our list size was double Yet to be seen. It is yet to be seen because it is a bit, it's a bit of an exponential curve when it comes to influencing your rank, right? It's super easy to go from 50,000 to 10,000. And then it's like we're talking about in the beginning of a, the beginning of a launch. And then, you know, to go from 10,000 to 1,000, a bit harder, 1,000 to 100, harder. 100 to 1, there's a lot that goes on there. There's a, there's a big difference between what the number one books are doing versus the number 100 books. I would imagine even from like top 20 to like top 5 is probably even yeah. steeper than that. I mean, Joe, you've been, you've been in the professional gaming sphere. You know, you can get, you know, you can get into that top, top 1,000, top 100 maybe in terms of like best – best people right but what's the difference between that 100th person the 50th person and the number one yeah i mean definitely a huge huge difference i think it's like that with everything um yeah definitely in terms of ranking things uh in terms of like everything is on a logarithmic scale the difference between number one and number 1000 versus 1000 to 10,000 it's easier to get from 10,000 to 1,000 than 1,000 to, to 1, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, and I think um, judging by some previous launches, usually if we get around the 800 mark in terms of like total sales for a given, for like the launch day mm -hmm. or the day before, that's good enough to get us pretty close to the top 100. So I think if we are able to double that, and say get 1600 sales. And of course there's um, other things that factor into ranking, right? 
there's the, the downloads, the Kindle limited downloads, there's your conversion rate, there's your overall traffic. But if we just look at that metric, the 800 sales, if we can double that to 1600, assuming all the other factors are the same, it can probably get us probably into the top 80, maybe each time. But yeah, I think, I think if we have the power to get into the top 100, it's just like you, your book can get swept up in the algorithm. Now it has so much more exposure. It's going to get a lot more eyes on it. And yeah, I mean the $4,200 investment would be well worth it for, you know, that exposure every single time. Yeah. Also the, once you get to that point, the natural emails that would come in from just being in the top 100, having so many people download your book, that's, yeah. that's another uh, pretty important factor to consider. So, you know, I've talked with um, a top 100 author before and, you know, I was talking to her because she got her um, account terminated and I don't know, I don't know why we got to talking, but we were on a call together and she was telling me how she had like 70,000 emails. Whoa. Yeah. And um, she wasn't even, I don't even know if she was trying. I don't even know if she was doing like lead generation like that. Did she ever get it back? Uh, I'm, I don't, I'm not sure. I only talked to her that one time. I've, you know, I'd messaged her here and there. Um, cause I've, I'd known her for a while. Right. But she was part of that kind of conglomerate that they were all in the top 100. And, um, I know they were doing a lot of Facebook ads and a lot of stuff like that, but yeah, I don't know if she ever got it back. Well, interestingly, I mean, here's the thing. I think if you had a 70,000, did she, uh, my guess is that she didn't stop publishing though, even though she's not publishing no. on Amazon, 70,000 email list is nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, no, she was going to, um, she was talking about how she was publishing on other platforms. She had, oh, that's why, that's why we were talking because I had heard that, you know, when we got, um, with that, we had that issue where we got terminated for because they linked our accounts. Um, someone told me that she was also selling on her own website, and so I reached out to her to talk about that. Mm. And um, yeah, so we were kind of talking about it's called like going wide, right? Like selling on other places, but Amazon, and you can have it on uh, Kobo and Barnes Noble and iBooks and uh, Draft Digital, all these other things. Yeah, but yeah, so I yeah, think. Uh, well, also the point I want to make is that by having a big list like that, especially if you can do that and break even, then you have that, that protection that if something goes wrong, you might not make as much money as you were on Amazon, but you have this big list and you can do a lot with it. Yeah. That's what I was about to say actually is we might, we, we I think we have a lot of incentive to accelerate this, to make this go a lot faster if we can, because the bigger the list, the more protected we are. And if we're going to get, you know, in terms of making money, like you, have, you obviously have to have a long-term view of it, but the sooner we can get into the top 100, the better, or the sooner we can do it on every launch, the better, because the more emails we'll get. And then we have, it just snowballs early. You get that protection earlier, you know, rather than getting caught with your pants down or something. I don't know a good analogy. Yeah, and this is, I mean, this is like part one of the case study, right? Because, you know, we started doing this. I wanted to see how the leads were going to respond because that's a whole separate part of the equation yeah. is, I, you know, I'm sure we we can go, we can get cheap leads. But the question is, are they going to stay engaged? And are we going to be actually able to continually make our money back with them? Yeah. So. I, I honestly think now that we're talking about this, I think – a big part of this probably will not come from the Facebook leads. I think it will it will be the Facebook leads snowballing it into higher rankings, and we're going to be getting a lot more natural leads. I think that's what's going to happen with this, and we're not going to need to to get a hundred thousand on the list. We're not going to need to spend what we're spending now to get that because, especially if we decide to launch more books. I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it should theoretically be more exponential in how that works and i mean I, I we definitely get subscribers when we do new launches and stuff and we continually get new subscribers like daily just organically but yeah the higher we can continue it's everything with kindle is just a big snowball the higher we can rank by doing the email lead the lead gen stuff the more people that sign up naturally to our emails and then the more 
the the rank the higher the rankings go, the more people that sign up. So that's just the way that this stuff works. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. Uh, now that we're talking about this, it's really not that much different in the blogging world as well. Because now I'm noticing one of our bigger blog sites is just getting these natural backlinks from other huge yeah. sites without me doing anything. Whereas when you start a new site, it's like you barely, you know, if you want to get a backlink and you don't want to, like you, you have to, like it's not easy to get. Like the chance of you getting a natural backlink when you first start your website or start your blog is probably, you're not going to get any backlinks for the first year or two. But now, because on this site we're ranking for so many keywords, the backlinks are coming in from sites that I could have never got otherwise. And I'm sure there's many levels to that. Once, if the site had 10 times the traffic, we'd be getting 10 times the natural backlinks. And then six months later, a year later, we'd get 100 times the traffic. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it kind of ties into, um, you know, something Dan Kennedy has said, not, not, um, not our Dan Kennedy, but the, the, the internet marketing Dan Kennedy, um, that, you know, whoever can spend the most money on traffic wins. And I think it, it has to do exactly with that snowball. Whereas with like with blogs, the more money you can spend putting out articles, the more likely they are to get backlinks and boost your traffic and then brings more money in. And then the more money you can spend on more articles. Yeah. So even with, you know, with drop shipping, it's similar, but with Kindle, it is because you're, you're dealing with the Amazon algorithm and you're dealing like Amazon has the people. So the more you can spend to get your book higher in Amazon, the more Amazonians will, will come to you yeah. and they'll see you. Yeah. What a great guy Jeff Bezos is. <laughs> Shout out to Jeff. What up? He doesn't own YouTube, Joe. What? I said he doesn't own YouTube. I know, but he, he might, might be watching. He might be watching this. You never know. Yeah, you think he's watching it? He might be chilling in the limo. He's like, oh, look, at the, what are they talking about about Kindle publishing? What are they saying about it? Oh, look, these two yeah. guys, Mike and Joe. Uh, yeah, we'll, t we'll take this uh, – this video after we're done, we'll email it to uh, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, we could, yeah, yeah, we should email it to him. I yeah, <laughs> we've talked about this before, but I always just wonder, like, if they've ever seen anything related to us and like our just who if Jeff if Jeff Bezos has ever seen us in any capacity from just like the trouble we've gotten in on Kindle or you know all all the things that we've been through on Kindle. How oh, they mislabeled my palette of mouthwash that I send into Amazon FBA. <laughs> yeah, there's just, there's, I don't know. I think there's no way, but we've gotten pretty high up. We've gotten pretty high up in the uh, corporate ladder with our Kindle antics. Well, what if Jeff's reading our books? That's the other thing. I don't know if he reads. I'm he sure have, he reads a lot. The Matrix, you know, just has the knowledge downloaded into him. <laughs> well, Warren Buffett and Bill Gates, they read a book a day. So I'm wondering if Jeff is on the same page he's reading yeah. our top 100 kindle books no all right. all right so let's let's get to the chat um and obviously last slide let's uh, check <laughs> out the slide build assets online.com slash playbook our free course go get it now sure. all right oh man this might be a shorter video today but yeah that's all right not to say less our I we got a bonus video coming out tomorrow, so bonus podcast um, with the land stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mick Strickland, when you launch, do you stagger the list? I'm assuming he means split the list up in terms of when you email them or just like splitting them up into different lists, and the answer is no. Because, um, like I said – Mick, I think people have this tendency to not want to disturb people too much. So if I'm doing a launch, especially in the beginning, I got to, I got to email everyone I have and I got to email them multiple times to get the most traffic possible to my book. So no, we've never staggered anything. If anything, we just, we just email them more. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Mud, but it mudders or B asks, Hey guys, finally made it live. I'm assuming he means he made it to the live stream. 
if I buy the fourteen ninety seven course, it says sixty seven dollars per month for the membership program. After that, is that ninety seven or still sixty seven if I buy the course? Uh, it says one month free elite. So yeah, the, it says one month free access to our private membership group, the Elite Fleet, and then sixty seven per month after that. Cancel any time. Um, well, it should be ninety seven dollars per month, but I didn't update it yet. <laughs> so if you buy the course before I update it. You'll get that sixty-seven dollars per month um, after your free month, one month of the Elite Fleet, and um, yeah, yeah, and yeah. He's looking at the dropshipping course, so yeah, it should be ninety-seven. I updated. If you just want to buy the membership, I updated that to ninety-seven yesterday. I forgot to update it on the course on the the dropshipping course, so it's still sixty-seven until I update it. But uh, I'll probably do that like very soon. When yeah, he's not, he's not just saying that as like a sales tactic either. Like literally in our last stream, he forgot that he's, he forgot to change the 67 to 97 on the uh, just the general elite fleet. And yeah, he changed it like on, on the air. So yeah, we're just lazy about it, honestly. Yeah. Um. So he asks, is there after purchasing the course, is there a Facebook group where I can ask questions? Um. Well, you don't need a Facebook group because you get access to the elite fleet, which is on discord so it's like a free it's a chat for all the elite fleet members so you'll be able to interact with and a, and a chat with us directly yeah it's a chat with us directly and a chat with all the other members so you can interact with us and yeah. everyone so you don't need a facebook group yeah the days of facebook groups are over i don't honestly i don't know how anyone uses a facebook group like i think facebook is the worst like I don't know how anyone actually uses it as a social media platform because man, I log on to it like to do the ads. Um, and I just, I don't know what, what I, so much weird stuff in my feed. Like it's so hard to tell, like, like how does anyone use this stuff? It's like so much nonsense. Like, <laughs> like, I don't know. Like I see everything from like, I mean, cause Joe, well, you're, you're, you basically have a business Facebook. We have so many, you're in like so many groups from like literally all the ventures we ever tried to do and, and use Facebook for over years. Yeah. That it's just like an absolute monstrosity. <sighs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, but still, but still, it's, it's still, it's still crazy. It's still crazy. Like, yeah, this, this I, I'll show you my Facebook right now on the screen. Make money while you repair your credit, remove huh. negative items, increase your credit. Like. And then I get an ad for something else. It's like the flex plug and play, like some, some ad for like some AliExpress uh, solar panels or something. Let me click this. Yeah. But, um, Mudazer said, do you teach buying and selling land in your membership program? Can it be done in Canada? I'm a U.S. citizen, but living in Canada, can I still buy and sell land in the U S? Um, well, we don't have like a course on it. We defer to uh, land Academy for that. And um, you can check it out our interview tomorrow. If you want more information about that, but uh, you can do it in the U S you actually, if you, even if you're not a U.S. citizen, you can buy land in the U S uh, which is interesting. So yeah, you can certainly do it, especially since you're a citizen and you don't need to visit anything. Yeah. Cause China, we, we, we do not. Visit China, the land. China's buying up all our land as we speak. Are they? I don't know. Oh, I would if I were them. Wait, maybe they're listening. <laughs> um, yeah. So watch, definitely watch the interview tomorrow. Um, and don't forget, if you do get Land Academy, if that's the road you want to go down, use our coupon code B A O. Yeah. But also, of course, join our dropshipping course. Yeah, and join our free course, buildassetsonline.com/playbook. Thank you for putting the HTTPS colon. Forward slash forward slash Joe. I gotta show them we got the SSL going on. It's top notch <laughs> top notch security when you download our playbook. I actually have I have a vivid memory from like who knows how young we were. I, I was like in your room or something. And I saw you just like try to go to a website and you put in this HTTPS or H, you know HTTP <laughs> forward, forward slash forward slash and you did it so fast. I was like why. The, I was like, oh my god, this is so complicated. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah, I must have been like, you know, between five and ten seeing this. But 
Well, didn't you have a sidekick then? Like you had like the team over sidekick. Was between five and ten? I don't know. You had that young. I had a sidekick when I was like in, a, in high school. All right. Well, I didn't have a cell phone in high school. I did. At 11th grade, I got a cell phone. So, oh, no, yeah. no yeah. definitely. You got a phone. Because wasn't that, wasn't that your first phone? No. No. Okay. All right. Why are people joining the stream now? Now we have 10 viewers, but like. I don't, whatever. Yeah. So we're leaving, what else, guys. What else we got to say? Oh, okay. one, thing, one thing I want to add, my, my, my days are, um, is when it comes to like signing documents and stuff for land, you don't have to physically be there at the closing or anything. Like you can just, you have to find a notary wherever you are. That's it. Um, we have, you know, we, we work with, we talk with other land people. And I know a guy who was like living in Japan for a while. And so he was closing deals. He would have to go to like a particular area to get a notary and um, do it that way. So you could do it from wherever. I have a question for the chat, actually. Let's see if they answer. Uh, yeah. Do you guys enjoy when we like really go off in many different topics? Like, so this, so this is a Kindle publishing uh, episode, obviously. We've talked about drop, we've touched on dropshipping a little bit, we've talked about blogs. Uh, we're talking about land now. Uh, so, so is this a good thing or should we really be strict about sticking to the, uh, to the topics? Curious to see what you guys think in the chat and then we'll end it. I think we were pretty on point with the Kindle publishing stuff for the majority of the presentation. No, I agree. I agree. But I, I mean, I, I feel like we still throw in stuff about other business models. So I don't know if like, if people who are maybe watching us for the first time, like, I don't know if that confuses them. I mean, we probably confuse them a whole lot. All right. Well, Mick loves it. That's all that counts. <laughs> we are probably so confusing to new people because we actually like talk about stuff in depth rather than say like just uh, like an influencer. who's just like screenshot. This is what I did. And just, you know, like platitude and, and basic stuff. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope, uh, I hope it's good. I hope it's good. <laughs> I hope we become influencers, and then we can make videos like we're, that. we're influencing Mick. <laughs> yeah. I don't like that. Meanwhile, Mick, Mick is one of the few that ordered our um, our shirts, and he didn't get one yet. It's because it set a yeah. ship to Australia, so it takes a while. But uh, yeah, buildassetsonline.com/slash/merch. Let me hmm. let me show that to the let me show some of the merch. To the YouTube uh, watchers, um, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I got to take a screenshot of this. Whew. Mike, where's 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 your hat? It's on. Oh, you found it. Yeah. Nice. Where's my hat? I don't know where my hat is. Hold on. I gotta... All right, so you can see on the screen now, if you go to buildassetsonline.com slash merch, we have some um, amazing, we have some amazing, uh, amazing stuff. So the Elite Fleet shirts, you can order one of those if you want, but uh, they're going to be kind of free for new members of the Elite Fleet eventually. Um depending on how we decide to price it. But if you want, you can order one. Um, we got the Take It Ease shirt, black women's uh, tee. We got... Uh... It's for black women? <laughs> <laughs> no, Mike, it's in black. Uh, we got okay. we got the It's Nothing to Sneeze At black tee. Uh, we got the Build Assets Online hat. It's Nothing to Sneeze At white tee. So that one's, <laughs> that, that one's for Caucasians. <laughs> and, we should uh, have it at the beginning of the of the stream. Yeah, next time we'll say this episode is brought to you by buildassetsonline.com yeah. slash merch. Go get our merch. So uh, yeah, good stuff, guys. Go get a shirt. Anything else? That's it. That's all I got. Oh, Karina says, got to get back to watch your other videos to catch up. New viewer here. Um, awesome. That's good. Yeah, I hope uh, hope it's not too confusing. And if and leave us a comment in another video, 
let us know. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, guys. And as always, take it easy.